Hi. In this program, we're going to look at another method of determining the enthalpy change of a particular reaction using what are called standard enthalpy changes of formation or standard enthalpy changes of combustion. Let's first of all look at what's meant by that word standard. Standard implies a certain set of conditions, and they're 298 Kelvin, or about 25 degrees Celsius, and 100 kPa, almost equal to standard atmospheric pressure. So that's what standard means. Now what about enthalpy change of formation? This data is in your IB data booklet, um, table 13, and we see the symbol for it right here. I've just enlarged it over here. This symbol up top is used to imply standard conditions. Now the enthalpy change of formation is defined the following way. It's the enthalpy change to make one mole of a substance from its elements at standard conditions. So let's take a look at, um, say, methane right here. We see its formula. So we are looking at making one mole, I'll put that down for emphasis, of methane, and at standard conditions, it exists as a gas. Now to make that from its elements, we would require carbon and hydrogen. Now, let's ask ourselves, what is hydrogen at standard conditions, at room temperature and standard pressure? Well, it's a gas. Carbon at standard conditions is a solid, and in particular, graphite. And it is but monoatomic. Now, to balance this equation, I would need a two here. So when we see the enthalpy change for that reaction there, that's for this particular equation. So we could say for a thermal equation that the delta H formation of this particular reaction is an exothermic reaction, negative 74 kilojoules per mole. Let's try another one, methyl amine. So again, we're allowed to make but one mole of methyl amine, CH3 and H2. And it's a gas at room temperature. Again, I would be using carbon solid, and in particular the graphite form, not diamond or buckyballs. Um, so carbon and our hydrogen we know is diatomic. And what about nitrogen? Well, nitrogen is also diatomic, triply bonded with another nitrogen at room conditions. So that would be the equation now. Now we have to balance it. So um, to make this particular chemical, we could look and say, okay, we've got one carbon, one carbon. We have five hydrogens, so we would need five over two here, and one nitrogen, so one over two here. So it's, it's all right to employ the use of fractional numbers here because we are limited to making one mole. And to finish it off then, the heat of formation associated with this particular reaction we can see is an endothermic process, 243 kilojoules per mole. So that's what formation stands for, the enthalpy associated with making one mole of an element of a compound from its elements at standard conditions. The other table we're going to look briefly at deals with combustion. And the information in this table gives us the enthalpy change, again at standard conditions, to burn one mole of the following fuels you might think of as. So to burn methane, so that would be CH4, under combustion, I'm going to combine it with oxygen gas, completely burning it will produce carbon dioxide gas and H2O. Now again, we're at standard conditions, so you have to ask yourself, what is the state of H2O at standard conditions? Well, it's a liquid form.
So that would be the equation. Now let's look at balancing it. Um, one carbon, we would make two of those and two of those. And the enthalpy associated with that is, um, there it is, exothermic negative 981 kilojoules per mole. And combustion reactions are tend to be exothermic. Um, let's try another one. So here we're burning ethanol, CH3, CHO. We're going to combine it with oxygen gas. It's a gas itself at standard conditions from here. And we're going to make carbon dioxide and again our water liquid. Balancing it, we've got two there, uh, a two there. Balancing our oxygens, we require six um, oxygens to balance this side, but I have one there, so I'm going to need five halves oxygen. Now, we don't double this equation to get rid of that fraction because this is bur uh, the enthalpy change when one mole of the substance is burned. So we're limited here by this being one mole. So it's okay to have that fractional amount. Now, let's take a look at how we can use this information to get the enthalpy change of an unknown reaction. So let's say we would like to figure out what's the enthalpy change of this particular reaction at standard conditions. It's unknown. Well, we know the heat of formation to make our reactants. We can look those up in a table just like we did above. So this line here represents the sum of all of the enthalpy of formations of all of my reactants. We also know the heats of formation to make our products. So to convert elements into products, again, that would be the sum of all the enthalpy changes of formation of all of my products. Now, Hess's law states that to determine the enthalpy change for a reaction, it's independent of the path. So one path is to go straight from reactants to products. But what I'm going to suggest is let's go another way. Let's go this way, where we go from reactants to our elements and then from our elements to our products. If we were to do that, we can see that this line here is going in the wrong direction. So we essentially need to get rid of that line. And since we want the reverse of that line, this then becomes a negative quantity. It will then take me from here, my starting position reactants, over here to my products, but by a different route. That then gives us this relationship. We can predict the enthalpy change for a reaction by taking the products minus, which we have over here, our reactants. Let's look at another way that we can do this, but using combustion equations. So we know the equations to convert um, our reactants into like carbon dioxide and water, and maybe sulfur dioxide, depending on what's in our reactants. And that would be represented by the sum of the enthalpy changes, standard enthalpy changes of combustion, of all of my reactants. Here we know the enthalpy change associated with the combustion of all of our products. So that would be this. Again, employing Hess's law, we want the enthalpy change for this reaction up here. We can arrive in the same position by going this way, followed by this way. 
Meaning, just like in the other case, if I can delete this and go in the other direction, this becomes the negative of the products. And that gives rise to a similar looking equation. The enthalpy change for reaction is reactants minus products. So when we're dealing with combustion, we have to remember it's reactants minus products. However, if we're dealing with formation equations, then it's products minus reactants. So we're going to deduce the enthalpy change for this reaction given this heats of formation data. Being that it is heats of formation, I'm going to employ this equation. So substituting in my values. So first of all, on the product side, I have two water molecules, so 2 times minus 2, 86, and I have one oxygen. Now, oxygen's not listed in the table, and that makes sense. The enthalpy of formation of elements is zero, so long as they're in the appropriate state that they are at standard conditions. So I'll just put it in here, though, as a reminder. And then minus our reactant over here. So that means we have one mole of it, uh, sorry, two moles of it at minus 187. And if we put that through the calculator, we arrive at minus 198 kilojoules. So that would be the enthalpy change using heats of formation for this reaction. Let's try one using the other relationship. This question refers us to section 14, which is the enthalpy of combustion data in our IB data booklet. And I presented some of it over here that's relevant to our particular question. First off, we need to come up with an equation uh, for this before we can apply um, the equation from our IB data booklet. So we start off with benzene. C6H6. And over here I can see that it's a, a liquid from my IB data booklet. I'm going to be using hydrogen gas and converting that into this chemical, cyclohexane, C6H12. And it is also a liquid at room temperature. And to balance that would require three hydrogens. So, using our combustion data, here's what the relationship says we need to do. So we're going to take our reactants. So starting off with the benzene, we have one of it at negative 3268. And we have three hydrogens and they're at negative 286. Minus our product, um, the cyclohexane, and there's one of them at negative 3920. And we work that out um, through our calculator. Um, it's a good strategy to break it down into steps to show an examiner if they're marking that you arrived at this total correctly. So I'll, I'll put it in. It's just a good strategy. And then you would have minus, minus 3920. So showing that intermediate step might allow for some uh, partial credit. And we arrive here at a positive answer indicating an endothermic process, 1510 kilojoules. So that's it. Be very careful in your choice of equations, because remember, when using combustion data, it's reactants minus products. However, when using formation data, it's products minus reactants. So be careful to check if you have access to your IB data booklet when you're doing these questions. Thanks for watching.